Welcome to Transform. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software, and today I'm going to show you the basics you'll need to know to use Alpha Transform to build data collection applications. We'll begin here at Transform Central, which is the portal into Alpha Transform. The URL is transform.alphasoftware.com. When you arrive, you're asked either to log in or create a new account. I already have an account, so let's start there. After I enter my username and password, I'm asked to choose an account. You probably have just one account, so this won't apply to you. But the reason you might have multiple accounts is if other people have invited you to use their account. We'll get into that later. OK, I chose my account, and now Transform is showing me these tabs here at the top. Home, Designer, Permissions, and Management Console. Now, when you log in, you might just see the Home tab and not the other tabs. If that's the case, you probably haven't entered your license number yet, or perhaps your trial account has expired. So you'll need to enter that license number, and you'll do that by clicking the Account License option. Once that's entered, you may need to log out and log back in again to make the license take effect. But once that's all done, you'll have the four tabs here like I do. Now, you already know that the Home tab is where you enter your license number, but it's also the place where you could change your password, change your account name, add users to your account, and other account administrative type activities. And for developers, the Home tab is also where you can get your API key. Now, looking up at the tabs, we'll get into the Management Console tab a little later in this video, and we'll get into the Permissions tab in another video. But for now, we're going to go to the Designer tab, which is where we create and edit our applications. When you click the Designer tab for the very first time, you'll get a message letting you know that no form types have been defined for your account, and you're given three options. Add Blank, which lets you create a new application where you start from scratch. Add Shared, which lets you create a new application, but from a predefined template. And Cancel, which takes you into the designer, but doesn't create a new form. In this example, we're going to click Add Blank, and now we're looking at the list of forms from our account. There's just one, and it's called New Form 1. We'll begin by giving our form a more imaginative name. Let's call it Equipment Inspection. And when we do, you'll see that the name changes here in our list of forms. And you'll see the title change here in the preview window on the right. And while we're looking at the preview pane, I, I want to show you how you can get some online help. Just click the Help link on the right, and the preview window is replaced with a help window with detailed information on how to use the designer. This is worth reading through, but we don't have to do that now. OK, looking back at the Properties pane, you'll see a big blue button called Input Quick Start Text. This is how we'll get started. When I press the button, you'll see the interface changes again. On the left is Help Text with some special links, which I'll show you how to use in a moment. On the right is a simple preview that gives you an approximation of how your final app will appear. Right now it's blank because we haven't added anything to our app. And in the middle is this kind of freeform text list area where we add fields, controls, and headings to our application. Now let's say we wanted to create an application that collected names and addresses. All we have to do is type the fields into the list like this. First name, last name, address 1, address 2, city, state, and zip and postcode. And boom, the app is done and it's now ready to be saved and used on a phone or tablet. In fact, that was almost too easy. So for our application, let's do something a little bit more sophisticated. If you remember, this is going to be an equipment inspection application, so let's put in fields for that. We'll start with an ID number and then the type of equipment. Now let's make this a little easier for the end user, and let's make this a list control so the user can choose the type of equipment from a list. So how do we do that? Well, if you look over here in the Quick Reference area, we're going to find where it says List Field, and then we'll click the Set link. And look what happened to the Quick Start text here in the middle. It's added to our Equipment Type field, a colon followed by Small, Medium, and Large. 
Now, these are just examples, and we're going to change them. In this case, what we want are servers, routers, and power supplies. And if you look over in the simple preview pane, you'll see the equipment type field here has text indicating that this is a list and that that list has three choices. Now, let's put in a field to indicate whether the equipment is working or not working. So we'll type equipment is working, and this time we'll set up a field as a button list. So the end user just has to click yes or no. To do that, we're going to go back to the quick reference. We're going to find button list, and we're going to click set. Now here the default choices, yes or no, are just what we want, so we don't need to make any further changes. And when we add that, you'll also see that the buttons actually appear here in the simple preview. Okay, let's add three more fields. Equipment location, equipment photo, and inspector signature. And now we'll set all of these to the correct field types. So we put the cursor on the Equipment Location field, and in the Quick Reference pane, we click Location. Next, we put the cursor in the Equipment Photo field, and in the Quick Reference pane, we click Photo. And guess what we do for Signature? That's right, we click on the Inspection Signature field, again in the Quick Reference section, and we click Signature. Now, let's take a look at the simple preview pane and see all of the fields we have added and their corresponding field types. Okay, for now we're done. We've inserted the fields we wanted and we chose the correct field types. Let's save our work and then see our app in action. So we click Save, which brings us back to our list of forms, and then we'll click the Upload icon to push our new form up to transform so that we can access it on a phone or tablet. And that's it. Our app is published. Let's go see it.